Russia. This is, this is how we roll. This, this, this is 97.9, the B.O.X. trying to maintain a positive um energy because man it could really <laughs> throw you at your spot but yeah it's been good i'm blessed for sure so we got to learn all about you today because i literally like you showed up on i think maybe like one of my spotify things and then i just i found 11 30 and i was mm -hmm. like she's so dope and i saw you were in dallas i'm like texas bet we finna connect <laughs> and that's just or so you tell how do you is it k what k white k white okay K yeah white. how did you is that your name so I've gotten K from my first name, Caitlin. Mm -hmm. When I moved to Texas back in 2011, I just didn't want many people to know my real name. I don't know why I'm not ashamed of it, but being from the hood and being named Caitlin is so foreign. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> so when I came to Texas, um, I actually went to Carol. I'm in Carrollton right now. I went to Hebron High School in Carrollton, Texas. So it's the suburbs. Mm -hmm. So I was like, let me abbreviate my name to just K. And so people started calling me K. I got used to it. However, I remember trying to change my Instagram name from Feisty K to like my name, <laughs> K K A Y W H I T E. Okay. But of course, that's taken. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, how can I get, I guess I can abbreviate my last name. So I just did W H T. <laughs> it's done. Uh, like, I was like, okay, yeah, I like, so okay, white, like, okay, white. <laughs> I feel it. And why did you end up moving to Texas, anyways? Um, only because I feel like, uh, being the fact that my mother did not want to get used to the um the same things, you know, try to break the cycle and try to be different because my family is so small and Memphis is not safe, of course. But I love my city. Mm -hmm. Um, but she just she didn't want to fall in the traps of being normal. So just for like a better opportunity for you and stuff. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Do you have siblings? I do. I have three sisters. Oh my gosh. Are you the youngest, oldest, middle? I'm the middle, the first middle. <laughs> first middle. What is it like being a middle child? I've heard some things. <laughs> um, actually it's pretty cool because we all get along. We're all pretty fair with each other. Um my mother made it uh very clear that she wanted the household to be a unit. Like so we're all you know, we get together, we're always having fun always having a good time always talking you know girls so it's all girls like so you know how many years apart are y'all y'all close so i got my big sister she's a year a month and 19 days oh, that's like I'm a, okay. she's like my best friend um and yeah. then i have my little sister she's 18 my baby she didn't got so big mm -hmm. and then my baby sister she's about to turn 16 in a few days so yeah we're getting big yeah. Yeah, she said we were getting big. The family's growing up. So what do they think about you doing music and everything? Um, it's quite normal to them because they're so used to me singing already. So it's like, eh, yeah, but they still support me. They, you know, mm -hmm. they love what they love the fact that I'm actually not giving up on my dreams. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. So, yeah, pretty they're it, I'm sure they feel good about it. I mean it'll it'll benefit them, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yo, so how did you get started making music? I think I saw that you were in the choir. Yes, I was in choir for all my life, all, all my years of high school. Um, it really, to be honest with you, it didn't really, it did something, but not as, it didn't make a huge effect on my career. Mm -hmm. It was just the fact that I loved doing it. You know, I was self-trained like all my life, really, I feel like. Um, so when I did it, I just wanted, I just wanted to be a part of like music theory and get to know, you know, how to read music and, you know, the notes and all the different sections that they have on stage with soprano to the bass. Like it's little things like that I wanted to actually get to know. Um, so what made me start my music career for real, I think it wasn't a forced situation. So I tried everything else. And honestly, when I looked up, everything would be gone. But like that right there would always stay the same. So I feel what else like did you try? You like I tried everything else. Yeah, I tried everything else. And then it was just like, you know what? This is what makes you happy. Yeah, and this your, is what makes me happy. Your but. voice is so unique. That's what I too, like, I can tell that you actually study music and, like, 
just it's it's a whole nother level are you who are your some of your influences because i saw in the youtube comment somebody said if you close your eyes it sounds like beyonce and sis but from h town i was like let me do this for real let me give it a fair chance and i was like hold up Oh my God. Um, you know what? She's definitely one of my main influences, but I do have influences that were in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So my mother, from my grandmother, my great-grandmother, my, gra my mom, they always played old school music from the Isley Brothers, Stevie Wonder, all Neo Soul, like Erica, yeah. um, uh, Jill Scott. So it's so many to name, you know, yeah. and I've listened to anything that caught my ear. And I, I remember roughly around like the 90, late 90s or whatever, uh, when I first discovered about Destiny's Child. I was like, yeah. So when I saw her, I was like, wait, something this about that. Mm -hmm. And then she first came out of her first out, uh, her first single album. I was just like, wait, something's about something about her, you know, and, mm -hmm. and I just used her as a template and I already knew I had it, but I didn't know what to do with it. I really didn't even think about what to do with it. It was just mm -hmm. I was just so infatuated by her voice. So, so how are you like making the moves now? Are you already signed to a label? I saw at the beginning of your video, you already signed, or is it? Um, I'm not signed, but that is like my producer's production company. Also, like he has other things, so we're kind of just like partnering basically. Mm -hmm. Um, so he does a lot of in-house things for me. Um, as mm -hmm. far as production, probably videography every now and then. You know, um, he's really good at what he does in photography yeah. as well. Yeah. Dope. Are you looking to sign to a major label or do you like the way that, you know, you put the music out, things are coming to you organically, to be honest? Yeah, I feel like that would definitely, you know, it's God's plan, I would feel like, you know, mm -hmm. if he if it pushes me in the direction for me to be able to do that, um, I would definitely take the opportunity. But, you know, you got to be smart about it. So, exactly. yeah. Make sure. And so before I let you go, too, we've got to talk a little bit about the music. I love the EP, ETA. You started off with Fair, and I loved it because you was, I was listening to it today, and I was struggling today in a mental yeah. space, honestly. Ooh. And you talk about mental struggles mm -hmm. and learning from the hurt. So what is, can you give us, like, what's one of the biggest lessons you've learned from an experience, anything? Okay, so it's so funny you asked that. Um, I was going through a crazy time when I were, wrote that song. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote that song first before all the others. Okay. So it was like crazy to me how I was thinking about the things that I was going through at the time and try to find a way to make it a general song instead of being so specific mm -hmm. and not being so, you know, uh, which is a mistake. I mean, I'm not saying the song is not good, it's great, but I need to learn to just put my emotions on the song more. So this is what this next project is for. But anyways, um, yeah, that was literally kind of my uh, lesson. It was just to put more emotion into it, you know, and feel and feel and make sure you put the, your ex you express in a healthy way and put your emotions mm -hmm. to something more positive and actually benefit you later on in life. So I feel that because it's okay to feel. I think people need yeah. to know that it's okay to feel. It's all no, right. it's totally fine. Yeah, definitely. So yeah. in this quarantine, I saw you got the video for Pity and stuff. Are you working on, are you going to give us some more videos or some more music? What's going on? I, I, and I also know I was creeping on Twitter. 1130 is just an interlude. That's my favorite. favorite oh, wow. Place. I Where's know. Where's the rest? Where's the rest? Don't worry, girl, because guess what? Don't worry. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, no. It's, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a remix for my next project. So it is an extension. Um, okay. And then as far as visuals and things like that and content, I'm actually in the midst of trying to find my style and like what I want to look like in my image and everything like that. So I kind of got into the core of like what mm -hmm. I really like. So I'm in the process of doing that. So therefore, whenever I do content, it's more of like quality. So my my uh, my guy Israel, the one that does the production and the videography and things like that, mm -hmm. is always on point. But I want to make sure that I'm on point too. And it's just like, hmm, let me make sure I switch my flow up and switch my style up because I love being girly. Yes, I do. I love being girly. But I would love to do like the tomboy girly look as well. So there's something that I'm trying to do with that. Um, and yeah, they're coming soon. Honestly, I, mean, I have a lot more in my catalog. So. so do you already have like, it's already done or it's in the works? Well, I would say in the works because honestly, the times from when I started till now, times have gone getting gotten shorter from each session. Mm -hmm. So it's basically me just building just a template and picking and choosing which ones that I want to put on the final project and adding finishing touches and then boom. So I will say that's in the work in the works for it. 
Okay. Well, yeah. awesome. I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get more music from you. I'm like, we got to get it early on. Yes. And tonight at 9, nine o'clock, it's going to be like 9.04, 9.05. But yeah. 9 o'clock. Um, we're going to play 11.30 p.m. And so everybody make sure that you have 97.9 The Box. Download the app <laughs> yeah, or on the website, The Box. If you're in Houston, it's going to be on the radio. But for everybody in Dallas, you know, make sure that's how they can tap in. And thank you again so much, Kate. I can't wait to see the rest of what you come out with. And we're going to stay in touch. And we'll be back. All right. Yes, yes. ma'am. Have a blessed day, okay? Thank you. You too, sis. Bye. <laughs> Bye, mamas. Bye. <laughs>